Hello everyone, Glenda Mollett here and welcome to my craft room this morning. I have a really fun masculine card for you today. Alrighty, just making sure my computer's all set up and I'm streaming live. Got it. Okay, good. So, sometimes it's really difficult to make masculine cards. I always find that I'm reaching for the browns and the blues. <laughs> so I did again. I reached for some blues. Now I was inspired by a card that I saw, <clears throat> excuse me, by Mary Fish. Um, I changed it up a bit, but I love the fact that she uses all the different kinds of layers. Sorry, I'm just taking a drink of tea because my throat is dry. There we are. Okay. So this card that we're going to make today uses the handsomely suited stamp set and the coordinating suit and ties dies. Now this makes all sorts of stuff. And you could make cards for any occasion. And you know they don't only have to be um, masculine cards because there's suspenders. I did, I used it to make a couple of cards. Good morning, Connie. I used it to make a couple of cards for um, my sister who is what well, is a veterinarian and just sold her practice. So I made her a couple of cards because I don't know about where you live, but where we live, veterinarians are having a terrible time. And she just needed a little bit of a pick me up. So we had that, um, what were the playmates that, Perfect Pets designer paper, whatever that was. That's what I used to make some, a couple of cards for her, just because she deserved them. And she was looking after our grand puppies as well. <clears throat> okay, so today I'm going to use a thick basic white card base, a piece of cute Halloween designer paper, five and a quarter by four on the front. On the inside, I'm using a strip that is five and a half by two. And then I'm going to layer a piece of basic white on there um, that is three and a quarter by four and a half. Balmy blue or Pacific point, balmy blue and basic white are all the same size. And that's three and an eighth by four and three eighths. <clears throat> and then I've got no, this is three and a, they're all three and a quarter by four and a half. Sorry. So all three are three and a quarter by four and a half. And this one is three and three, three and one eighth by four and three eighths. Now, all of these measurements you can find in the description of my video. I've posted a link to um, the recipes for you. And also a link to the supply list. And I have another couple of pieces of designer paper. This is the pattern party designer paper. And I'm just going to stamp right on it to create those cute bows. Uh-oh. Forgot my machine again. Oh, Lord. I should be counting how many times I start my live. And I should be counting how many times I start my live and don't have my machine here ready for me to use. So... Hi and good morning. Sorry, I for completely forgot to do my face for you at the beginning. Now we'll do picture in picture so that you can see it. Let's move that around a little bit so that it's a little bit more centered. There we go. Okay, so we're ready to go. I have my heat gun. I have my embossing powder. And I have my die cutting machine. So I'm going to stamp the bow tie image from the stamp set in Versamark. I hadn't done heat embossing for a very long time, and I'm on a kick lately, and I've been doing a lot of it. So I'm just going to ink it up, stamp it right on the designer paper like this. And then I'm going to take the designer paper and put some white embossing powder on it. And I do, I stamp an em. Um, I'm stamping this sheet and then putting the powder on, and then I'll stamp the other sheet and put the powder on. Uh-oh. Apparently, I should have used my embossing, buddy. 
Oof. Staticky today. All right. Now I get number two and number three done. And there we go. Now you have to work relatively quickly with um, this ink, but it's not a rush. Like you have probably 30 or 40 seconds to do what you have to do. And just pour the the ink or the embossing powder over the top. And if you don't get enough, add some more. And then I turn it over and I give it a good flick to get rid of all the, most of the excess. Now, there's a lot of it stuck on here, which could have been fixed if I had of used my embossing powder or my embossing buddy, which is just cornstarch. So I'm just going in and removing the excess that's going to interfere with my image. A lot of it you won't see because of the, the die cut. There you go. Okay. So once you have the powder on, you can let it sit. It won't dry. All right. Now, get rid of the excess embossing powder because, you know, it goes everywhere. No matter how close you are, you get it everywhere. All right. So now I'm going to get my heat gun. And when I'm using my heat gun, the tendency I see everybody do is to put it here and go like this. You don't have to. By doing this, you're wiggling your heat elements in there, and you could burn out your heat gun. So just turn it on, and I hold it here till I feel it's starting to warm up. Usually my hands are cold too, so that helps them. And then I'm just holding it still on one corner, and you just wait until it starts to turn shiny. And you can see that, how much whiter that is. And then you just walk it across now you do have to be careful because this is over 400 degrees and you get your fingers in the way, it definitely hurts. So I'm just doing both of them on this sheet. And then I'll get my other one. Do the same thing. Now I'm holding it up off of the table because I recently discovered or was told that if you leave it up, if you hold it up in the air, Turn that noisy thing off. If you hold it up in the air, then the heat disperses and you get a nice thin line. If you do it on the table and you're heating it, the heat is trapped under there. So it tends to move the embossing powder around. So you end up with a wider image. Not that one is better than the other. They're both the same. It just depends on which look you're going for. Okay, so I'm putting my die on here. And I'm going to have to cut these out one at a time, unfortunately, because I only have one die. But that's okay. Run that through my machine. I don't know why my, my throat has a froggy in it this morning. That's the problem with doing things so early in the morning. I My... Haven't done any talking before I get to see you. Okay, there's one done. I'll line up the other one. Now this is just a, a little bit of post-it tape that I've got on here just to hold it in place while I move it over to my where my machine is. All right. There we go. Here's the second one. And line up the third one. If you don't have the dies for this, you can always um, fussy cut them too. I prefer the dies. It's probably just as fast to fussy cut them as it is to use the dies with all the lining up you have to do. And this is the end of the die cutting. There is no more. Now, if you didn't want the bow ties, you could very easily substitute one of the long ties. 
if you wanted. And so it would just be a different look. See, your, boat, your tie will fit on there, either one. But I've made cards with those ties and I hadn't used the bow ties yet. So I really wanted to use them. Okay, get that out. Get my post-it tape off here so I can put my die away. As you know, I lose things all the time in my craft room. Okay, so now we will stamp. And so there's two pieces of white and it is um, three and a quarter by four and a half and three and an eighth by three and three eighths. So there's just a half or a quarter of an inch difference, which gives you one eighth all the way around. And I'm going to stamp the smaller one in memento ink with the sentiment that also comes from the handsomely suited um, bundle stamp set. I have to tell you a funny story. So when I was, I make labels for my, hang on. There we go. Can't talk and stamp at the same time. Ooh, need to re-ink that one. That little baby O. <laughs> I make labels for my my dies so I know um, if somebody asks me what the number and how much they are and then what they what stamp set they coordinate with. Look what I did. Sweet and tie dies. Yep, apparently don't know how to talk. Okay, so now the inside one, the inside of the card. Let's get things organized here and find the inside piece. Oh, there it is. Now I'm going to use, uh, apparently I don't have my dirty paper underneath there. Oh well, use this. Um, I'm going to use Pacific Point and the bow tie image again. Now I'm not worried about cleaning it because the Versamark ink will not go onto your um, classic ink pads. Now this one I did full and I did and then I went graduated I inked stamped 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 it. This one I'm going to do something a little bit more funky. I'm going to do a few bow ties on here. Just cuz I can, you know, cuz it, it is my card. So there we go. This would make a really cool um mini mouse bow tie. You know the one that she has in her hair. There, so that there, I did the ink stamp, stamp, stamp thing on the envelope. If you did it in black and red, that would be so cute. Okay, so that's the inside. Now, that's all of our pieces. All we have to do now is put them all together. Okay, so I'll get my card base out and we'll put this um, piece of paper. This is from the cute Halloween designer paper. And it's not just for Halloween. I love how Stamping Up has put Halloween on one side and then black and white on the other. So you can use it black and white. Oh, I have a mung on there. How the heck did I get that on there? Good Lord. Must be on my fingers somewhere. Okay, so you could sponge color onto it if you wanted to, instead of leaving it black and white, it really works well. Okay, so then Balmy Blue and then Pacific Point. I'm just going to put some adhesive on the back of this. And this one's going to tilt a little bit that way. Oops, like that. And then this one, I'm just going to put it in the middle because it's going to hang off. And I don't want to have to um, have it bowed over. So I'm just, I'm leaving the the edges un, un adhesived. There's a good word. Uh oh. I hope that's in pencil. 
Okay, so it just kind of tilts the other way like that. Let's see if I can get, there's a, oh good, it is pencil. There was a little note on there for some reason. Must have been in another kit. Okay, so there we got that. And now this is the white piece that's going to layer underneath that white piece. And this one is also flat. And that goes on straight, as straight as you can make it. So this is easy because I've got the stripes on there to kind of pay attention to. And there we go. Glue that down. Now this is going up on dimensionals. Got to have some height in your card somewhere unless you are mailing it overseas then you want your card to be as flat as you can otherwise it's astronomically expensive and i like using lots of dimensionals so my cards don't collapse in the middle okay now it's my pokey tool I find the quickest way to remove these is just to use my pokey tool, poke it into the liner, and then just kind of pop it off. Oops, that one didn't come. There we go. That's how quick and easy that is. Now this is going to be centered on this piece. Oop. Hopefully I'll get it straight-ish. There we go. There we are. Okay. So now I'm just going to lay my bow ties on here in some sort of a squiggly fashion. Or you could put them straight like this. That works too. Maybe I'll do it that way so that you can see the difference. So when you're doing something and you've got like more than two, you put the top one on, then you put the bottom one on, kind of eyeballing the line up there. And then you put the middle one on because it's a lot easier to get them, get one centered than it is to have to worry about centering two of them. Yeah, I haven't pushed them down yet because I need to make sure that they're straight. Yep, yeah. there we go. So that's the difference between doing them squiggly and doing them all in a row. And then I'll just get my matte black dots. And we'll add a few, we'll add some dots to it. This is my nemesis trying to decide where all of these are going to go. Okay, this one should be up a little bit higher. Uh oh, sorry, I forgot to put my phone on Do Not Disturb. Okay, so there we go. There's our card front done. That didn't take too long. And the inside is just as easy. Just open this up here so for you to have a look at while I do it. Maybe I'll open it up. So um, I have a two inch by five and a half inches, and it's going to go right there. Now I can use either side, but because this is not a Halloween card, I'm just going to use the stripe side. And I'm going to line it up right with the edge of that fold and right at the bottom, like that. And then the piece that was stamped, just put some adhesive on there with my stamp and seal. And that's going to go 
This one I put down towards the bottom. I think this one I'll center, just so you see difference between the two. Look, I almost got it straight too. So there we go. That's how easy it is to make a masculine card using blues and ha Halloween papers. Good morning, Shanna. Yeah, so that's it. That took like half an hour, not even a half an hour to do that card. That's awesome. Okay, so seeing as I have time, let me just do a sneak peek. We have a new bundle, an early release bundle coming in November that is from the upcoming January to June mini catalog. And right as of the 2nd of November, you'll be able to order the Gard Eden's Garden Bundle. So there's the stamp set, and I'll get it up close so that you can see those gorgeous fonts. And then the coordinating dies. There is um, this, they're calling this cotton paper. It's a lot like um, tissue paper. So it's got a nice textured feeling on one side and the other side is smooth and shiny and you get 10 sheets of that. And then there's the designer paper. Let me open it and I will show you quickly because the designer paper and the cotton paper and the embellishments, which I don't have because I couldn't order them when I ordered this. And of course, they're going to be in tomorrow or Thursday. Um, the papers and the embellishments are only available during the promotion from the 2nd of November till I think the 31st of December or while supplies last. So if they sell out, it's gone, but they're, they're not going to have it in the catalog. So it's the only way to get this paper is right now. So one side has gold foiling on it and the other side has a green and white pattern. So that's one sheet. And then look at this one. Isn't that, look at that. I love it. And then blotches. And if anybody knows me, they know how much I love my blotches. It is spectacular, Shana. I agree. And then there's this one, and look at it. One even has blotches in it, but I love how they've kind of variegated the pattern in the colors. And this one has a nice geometric pattern to it. And then there's this pattern. I this is really hard to see the the foiling because it's all in little itty bitty teeny tiny dots on it, but they're there. And then the other side of this one is beautiful. It's ombre and it goes from soft succulent down to evening evergreen. Isn't that gorgeous? Holy man. And then finally, nope, not finally, second to the last, there's another sheet with lots and lots of gold foiling on it. And the other side, this one even has blotches. And then the last sheet, I saved the best for last. Look at this pattern on this one. Oops, let's put it right side up. Look at the pattern on that one. Look at the gold foiling. And I don't know whether you can see. Let me see if I can focus in. Do you see the ghosting in the background there? So the background is evening evergreen, but it, it's like they've done it and then used um, water on a stamp to lift the color up. So... It's got a variegated background, and then all of these leaves are variegated as well. It's stunning. And then a cross hatch on the back of that one. So November the 2nd, that will be available in Canada. It's 104.75 or something like that. But it's um, the information will be coming out in one of my weekly updates if you are at all interested. And you can sign up for the weekly updates on my blog. And the link to my blog, if you click on um, the li my link tree link, it has all of my links in there. You can sign up for my blog and get a free, two free thank you projects, um, tutorials. And then every week when you sign up for my weekly updates, 
Every week you get a free card tutorial as well. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope you have a spectacular day and that you get to have some crafty time in your craft room as well. And I'll see you next Tuesday, 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time for my YouTube live. Thanks so much, everyone. Stampin' Smiles.